Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship this morning. And I pray that you're all well out there. This morning I'd like to share with you from Psalm 31, verse 1 to 5. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock and my refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead men guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, O Lord, my faithful God. Some time ago, a um, newspaper ran, wanted to run a series of articles on what was wrong with the world and they asked certain contributors to put something in and G.K. Chesterton was asked and his contribution was, I am. That was it, two words, I am. What's wrong with the world? I am. And as we come to worship this morning, may we take responsibility for who God has made us and what he calls us to be. Let's pray. Lord God, you have entrusted to us a great responsibility. You've called us to be the agents of proclaiming the kingdom of God. It's a big task and we're frail, we fail, we feel totally inadequate to do what you've called us to be. And we are inadequate. We're inadequate when we try to do this in our own way. But Lord, we have your spirit and we are recipients of your grace. We're made holy and blameless, but only through your grace is that so. And yet we are guilty of lacking trust in your power and your strength, and we try to do things in our own attempts, which at best are doomed to failure. They are feeble and frail. So Lord, we repent this morning of our lack of trust in you, we repent that we ignore what you freely give to us. That is your power and your strength and the Spirit. Lord, forgive us and teach us to fully trust in you. Forgive us and teach us as Christ's people to be more Christ-like. And Lord, to do that, we ask that you would draw us deeper into you, that we would become so entrenched in your Spirit that we would act with integrity and with Christ-like nature. Lord, infuse in us a passion and a purpose and a dependence on you. Teach us to be still and to listen to what you call us to do. And Lord, as we think of the coronavirus, we ask, what are you telling us in all this? In years gone by, you brought droughts, you brought pestilence, as a warning to people about the way they lived, there was a message in the things that happened. Lord, what are you telling us in this coronavirus? Are you bringing us to a closer walk with you? Are you warning us about what is to come? Lord, we pray that we would be enlightened spiritually about why this is here. Thank you, Lord, for your patience with us. Thank you for your fellowship of this church. And we pray that as we are apart, that we might continue to encourage and love each other. Lord, we pray for any special needs that may be in this congregation. We pray our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Reading today is, is from John chapter 14, verse 1 to verse 14. And Jesus is speaking here. He says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you. I, would, I have told, not have, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that so that you may be where I am. 
You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the evidence of the work themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. I'm going to call Johnson forward to expound on, those, on that passage. Good morning, church. Oh, thank you, Russell, for the reading of the Word of God. Um, let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you this morning. We thank you that you are there for us. We thank you that you care for us. We thank you that even in times like this, we find our protection in you. Help us to find our way, Lord Jesus Christ. As you proclaim it through the scriptures, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Help us, Lord Jesus Christ, to find our way in you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. Um, from the readings of today, we find that um, Jesus was talking about himself when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So today's theme is the way, the truth, and the life. I think you can see up there. It's there. <laughs> Jesus had just finished telling his disciples that he was going to heaven, and he was going to prepare a place in heaven for them so they could spend eternity with him as well. So one of the disciples, Thomas, replied to Jesus in verse 5. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? In John 14, verse 5. Jesus did not just give an answer. He dropped a bomb. He gave the nuclear option. He gave the mother of all political incorrect statements. He made a claim that if true, means that every other religion in the world is flat, dead, and wrong. It doesn't exist. Of all the things that Jesus said, some of the most significant are the words in today's gospel reading. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, there is an absolute nature to those words, isn't there? There is completeness to that saying. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. That one statement raises more blood pressures and more, more, makes more people blood boil than any other statement you can make about any other subject. I, I remember one day, early Sunday morning, someone visited the church for the first time. And the person came in and he saw this 
right up on our cross. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he told me, if you don't remove that, she was not going to come back into the church. She was not, because her thinking was, Jesus is not the only way. There are so many ways to go to heaven. To say that and believe that in today's society with today's predominant non-biblical worldview makes you arrogant, bigoted, narrow-minded, and worst of all, intolerant. The greatest evil in today's culture is not rape, murder, or even child molestation. It is intolerance. People today are willing to tolerate any viewpoint except the viewpoint that claims to be uniquely true. Jesus often shocked people with teachings that cut across the grain of human nature and went diametrically opposed to what most people thought. For example, he said things like this, the way to save your life is to lose it. The first will be the last and the last will be the first. Rejoice when you are persecuted. Pray for your enemies. Turn the other cheek. It is better to give than to receive. For among all the ways that Jesus spoke, these are also some of the most debated. Notice, Jesus did not say, I am one of the ways. He did not say, I am one of the truths, among others. He did not say, I am a life, among others. No, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The great Catholic theologian, Thomas Akembis, called the meaning of Jesus' ways and said about them, without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Without the life, there is no living. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. That is what Jesus said. Let us pause for a few moments this morning from our busy schedules to give these words some thought. Let us take a few minutes today to pull them apart and examine them more closely in. For them there is a greater blessing in these words. In them there is eternal meaning and truth. Jesus begins by saying, I am the way. When God created us, he didn't put us permanently in a set of revolving doors like those that go around and around in front of all buildings. He didn't do that. Even though life may at times seem to be just going circles, even though there are those who say that life is one circle after another and that everything that comes around goes around, and even though there are theories about life that they say that life is one reincarnation after another. Jesus does not say that. God has created us with a purpose. Life has a God to it. We are created to travel through life towards an end. And the way to that end, Jesus says today, is through him. We don't find the way by wandering. It's not enough to live life by just doing it. There is a way, and Jesus tells us today, it is through him that we find the way. So the first, safest, most secure, most dependable way through life is by Christ. That's why Jesus says, I am the way. He knows it, that is the way. If we want to find our way to the place God has created us, we must follow Christ. For Jesus leads us to God, the apostle Philip learned that. After Thomas had questioned Jesus on where he was going, Philip came to Jesus and said, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Show us God, Philip asked him. You help us understand who God is and that will be enough for us to understand where you are living. And to that request, Jesus responded by saying, Yes, I've been with you all this time, Philip, and it's true you do not know me. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. I have been with you for all this time. But still you are asking, where is the Father? You don't know me. I am the Father. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. So imagine that 
When Jesus says, I am the way, he tells us that he is the way to know God. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. God need not to be a mystery to us. If you know me, Jesus says, you know the Father. The moment you know me, you know the Father. So let us see what we know about Jesus. First of all, we know that Jesus is love. No one would dare argue against that. When we see Jesus, we see love in action. We see love reaching out a hand of care. We see love healing the labor, accepting the outcast, rebuking the head field. That's what we see. We see love restoring the fallen, welcoming prodigal, freeing captive, and giving new life to all. Remember what Jesus said to the disciples of John the Baptist. When they came to him asking if he was the Messiah sent by God. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 11 verse 4? Jesus says, God tell John what you see and hear. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Those who have lepros are cured. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And good news is preached to the poor. There is no doubt about it. When we look at Jesus, we see love in action. And that is what we should be looking for. So Jesus' ways then are an invitation to know God as well as an example of how to live our lives. They are intended to invite us to draw closer to God as well as give us a model to pattern our lives after Jesus. In fact, in John 14 verse 12, that's exactly what Jesus says. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. Again in John 15, 12 verse 17, Jesus repeats the saying, This command I leave with you, that you should love one another as I have loved you. So we can see that Jesus is loved through what he was doing. It is important to remember that for Jesus, love was not primarily a feeling. For Jesus, love was much more concrete than that. That's why Jesus said, you are my friends when you obey my commands. You are my friends when you do what I command. In John 15 verse 14. For Jesus' love was expressed in actions. Love was the ways and deeds of our lives, our attitudes and actions towards others. So the path through life to the place where God has created us is found through love. Love for God and love for one another. You cannot say I love God when you hate your brother. You can't say I love my brother and hate your God. That's why Jesus doesn't say religion is the way to heaven or righteousness is the way to heaven or ritual is the way to heaven. He said I am the way to heaven. Unlike other religious leaders we have ever lived, Jesus Christ authenticated who he was by what he did. He lived a perfect life. He fulfilled scores of century old prophecies made before he was even born. He performed miracles. He healed the sick, raised the dead, and in ultimate, he fulfilled his own prophecy by being raised from the dead. That's why we believe in the resurrection. That's why religion and Christianity are absolutely totally different. Christianity is not a religion. It is a way of life. You can, never, re you can have, never have religion without Jesus. But you can't have Christianity without Christ. You can be a Buddhist without knowing Buddha. You can be a Muslim without knowing Mohammed. You can be a Confucianist without knowing Confucius. But you cannot be a Christian without personal knowing Jesus Christ. And that is very important. It's relational. Christianity is relational. You, have, you need to know Jesus Christ and have personal relationship with Christ. Personal relationship is what is needed. I make no apology when I say to you that Jesus Christ is not a good way to heaven. He is not a better way to heaven. He is not even the best way to heaven. He is the only way to heaven. He is the only way. If you believe in Christ, you know the way. If you do not believe that you have a real problem with Jesus Christ, if there is any other way to God than, than Jesus Christ, then you have just called Jesus Christ a liar, a fake, and a fraud. It's not that. As a matter of fact, if there is any other way to God, that is exactly what he was. But I have 
stand in my eternal destiny that he wasn't a liar. He wasn't a fake. He wasn't a fraud. He was exactly who he said he was. The son of God. And who is the only way to heaven. And that is what I believe. So listen to the last part of the statement again. No one comes to the Father but through me. No one. It means no other religion. No one. With that one statement, Jesus struck a fatal blow to that doctrine called universalism. That says that all roads lead to heaven. That one way is just as good as another way. And eventually, everybody is going to wind up in the same place. No. He is the way. And he said, no one comes to the Father except through him. So if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, no way. No. Now, we are not only travelers through life. We are also called to be learners. And for that reason, Jesus went on to say, I am the way. I am the truth. We are created for the truth. And seeking and living the truth is what we are called to do. However, when you think about it, it is rather ironic. What is the truth? Why do more books have been written about Jesus than about any other person who ever lived? Jesus never wrote a book. <laughs> think about it. Jesus had never written any book. Wrote a book. He didn't sit down and write about the truth or anything like that. In fact, there is only one instance in the gospel when Jesus wrote anything and that was in the dust at his feet and we have no record of what he wrote. That is the only record we have. But that's okay. Because instead of writing about the truth, Jesus lived it. His life was witness to the truth. And the truth of his life is seen through the eyes of the blind man who sees. The blind man now can see. The truth of his life is seen in the leper who returned to give thanks after being healed. The death and feet of the lamb made well. And the dead now raised to life. People like Lazarus. For Jesus is truth in the flesh, truth incarnate, and truth able to say, if anyone sees me, he has seen the Father. That is truth. For when we look at Jesus, we see the truth about God. We learn that first and foremost, God is love. It is God's nature to love. It is God's nature to show mercy. It is God's nature to forgive and accept the outcast. Welcome home, the prodigal. In Christ, we see the very nature of who God, whose love for us is an end, unwarranted, and most unexpected. As Christians, we need to know this. And when we look at Jesus, we learn the truth about the life God wants us to live. We too are to love, to forgive, to show mercy, and welcome each other. And in doing so, be part of the truth about God. He also says, if anyone says, I love God, and he yet hates his brother or sister. He is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother or sister, whom he has seen, he cannot love God whom he has not seen. 1 John 4 verse 20. So we need to put it into practice. When we look at Jesus, we also see the truth about ourselves. Maybe that's why it is so hard to look at Jesus sometimes. And always. Because when we look at Jesus, we see ourselves the ugliness of our lives. The sinfulness of our thoughts and the deeds, the blemishes of selfishness, pride, and our failure to love. It all comes on. It's like we are looking into a mirror and we are able to see ourselves. When Jesus says, I'm the truth, he confronts us with our failures to forgive, our refusals to have show mercy, and our self-righteousness, pride that puts others down. That is what Jesus is saying. That's why it is it is so important that Jesus not only say, I am the way and the truth, but also says, I am the life. I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. For without Jesus, there's no life in us. Left to our own judge by our own thoughts and deeds, there's no hope for us without Jesus. So there's no life without Jesus. And in fact, that the message of scripture isn't it? How does Paul put it? All you have seen and fall short of the glory of God. That is what Paul says. And the wages of sin is death. So there's no life. Without Jesus, there's no life. So a lot of people without Jesus, I call them the living dead. You have no 
life. That's why these words are so sweet to our ears because Jesus also said, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So these words remind us that Jesus is our life. There are Jesus' invitation to us to come to him, to receive him, the gift of life that God created us. It is faith that brings God's blessing to life for us. It is faith that puts on the path that leads to God. It is faith that enables us to see the truth about our lives and to embrace the truth about God. So we need to have faith, faith in God. It is faith that brings God's gift of life to us. Faith comes from trusting in Jesus' way, following his example and living with God. So we need to have faith in God. Because Jesus tells us plainly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John 14, verse 16, 6. Throughout John's gospel, this has been the theme. In Jesus, we have life. If you are in Christ, you have life. In fact, in the very beginning of his gospel, that's what John tells us. He writes, in the beginning was the way, and in him was life, and life was light of man. And again, at the end of the gospel, John says that same thing. These things are written so that you may have faith, faith in him, so that you may have life, life in Christ. And that's why they were written. And that's very important for you to know. Faith in Jesus is the only way to truly know God and receive the meaningful life he wants for each of us. Many people know all about God and Jesus, but they don't know God personally. They don't know Jesus personally. Genuine faith is personal and relational. Faith is based on the truth that can be known about God and through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. If you believe that, you'll be saved. That is God's promise to us in Jesus, we have the way, the truth, and the life that God creates us to be. In Jesus, we find the blessing that God has ready for us. In Jesus, we find the power for living and the essence of life. That's why he tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Isn't that great? He is the way in Jesus' name. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Believe in him. You need to believe in him. You need to have faith in Jesus. When you put all your doubts, your worries in Christ, then you are okay. People are worried about the coronavirus. People are worried about what is happening. I'm not worried about the coronavirus because I know who I believe in. Jesus Christ. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is in charge. He is in control of our lives. May you take that seriously and try to encourage others and tell others about it. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No other way will reach to heaven besides Christ. May the good Lord bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, forgive us, loving Lord, that we have strayed from your way. Forgive us for the times our lives have not been shaped by your truth. Forgive us for denying your life in us and in others by the way we have lived. In the name of Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, we pray. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching church today. There's still an, a, an opportunity for you to contribute to the church and the running of the church. And uh, don't forget your tithes and offerings. And let's just say a prayer on the offerings that you have made, not just of your uh, gifts, but of yourself, as we, uh, we offer ourselves to God. Loving God, we thank you for the privilege we have of knowing you. We thank you for the way in which you provided for us in many ways. And out of that provision, we give to you what is really yours. And so we offer not only our monetary gifts, but ourselves as well. Lord, we rededicate ourselves to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.